Hello gorgeous friends! Welcome back to Chrysalis Books. My name is Jessica. When I'm not at my full-time job, I'm a writer, reader, and homesteader. I manage the love side, which is my urban homestead. The topic of today's video is a wrap-up of everything I read in September. So grab a cup of coffee and let's dive right in! I'm going to be covering these books in no particular order. They are stacked precariously over here on my desk, and so I'm basically just going to start at the top of the stack and work my way down. I included in this video some good books that I read in August as well, and some not so good. Okay, first up is Bloodbound by Patricia Briggs. I read this in September. This was published in 2007. This is the second book in her Mercy Briggs series. I will be talking about this book in more detail in my October series review video, so look forward to that coming up soon. Next in September, I read the first book in this Nora Roberts trilogy which is the Born In trilogy. I read Born In Fire on my Kindle because someone gifted me these two books and I don't like to start in the middle of a trilogy. I like to read the first book. They didn't give me the first book, which is fine. And so I got the first book on my Kindle and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. Like, ugh. So I think these are meant to be like modern retellings of fairy tales. The first one, Born in Fire, is a Cinderella retelling. They're set in Ireland. Let me see when these came out. 1996 is when this one came out. Nineteen ninety five, so I'm guessing the first one came out in ninety four and it just ooh. so the first book born in fire it's set in ireland the main protagonist who's like the cinderella character is a glass artist then there's this fella her prince charming who is an art dealer in dublin i want to say who wants to sell her art help her make more money to get her sister away from her evil mother, the evil stepmother trope, you know. And the the reason that I hated it is because this relationship between the Prince Charming character, I don't even remember his name, and the artist, the Cinderella, is abusive. They like physically abuse each other, like pushing and hitting. They psychologically abuse each other. And that is not Prince Charming. Like that is not, not Cinderella. I am an advocate for Disney princesses. Maybe I'll make a video about this, but in particular, I love Cinderella. She's my absolute favorite. I identify with her in so many ways. This was not a good Cinderella retelling. There was nothing about the relationship that made me like want to root for them. And I just, I just thought it was a terrible book. So I don't even have it on my Kindle anymore. I deleted it off my Kindle and I will be unhauling these and not going to read them. Hmm. Okay, next up in September was this book, Goldfish by Paul Paradise. Those of you who see my other channel um, where I document my homesteading life, you know that I am obsessed with goldfish. I have a fish room in my basement and I have probably around 20, 15 to 20 goldfish right now. I absolutely love the history of goldfish. I love the, um, just everything about fancy goldfish there's so much more than just being like a first-time pet there's so much more complex than what you see at the pet smarts and pet co's um 
So anyway, anytime I see a book about goldfish where I can learn a little bit more about the history and traditions behind it, it's kind of similar to koi. You know, koi fish have a long history of traditions and stuff. And goldfish is the same, are, are the same way. So anyway, anytime I see a goldfish book, I kind of have to have it. And they're hard to find. There's not a lot out there about them. This book was published in 1988. And because it is old, a lot of the information in here on how to properly care for a goldfish is bad. <laughs> it is really bad. It would actually probably do harm to a goldfish. If you're interested in goldfish, I do have a video up on my other channel about basic goldfish care, and I'll link you to that down below. So I didn't like that part of this book, but I give it a pass because it is outdated, and at the time it was published, that information was probably accurate. Um, the stuff that I did like about this book was it had really nice photos like this was a very a very photo heavy book and it was really fun to go through and see <laughs> I was able to be like okay so like this is a Blackmore goldfish and I have one of those <laughs> this is a Ronchu and I have one of those so it was like fun going through and seeing like what photos he have of, of which which goldfish that I have um, and I did like this section on the history here that was pretty interesting and pretty accurate and I also liked this part on the actual biology of goldfish I learned some interesting new things about their actually an, their actual anatomy and physiology that I didn't know before so some information in this is good some information in this is bad um, I ended up giving it two stars because it's not something I would recommend anyone pick up unless they're already really well versed in how to care for a goldfish because this will give improper information on that. But if you just want information on like history and tradition and some good photos, it's not a bad read. So two stars out of five for this. I didn't talk about my rating, so I rated this three out of five stars. Um, this Born in Fire one, one out of five stars. I also have a video up on how I rate my books, so I'll leave a link up here for that so you can see what those star ratings actually mean in terms of the quality. Um, the next book I read in September was The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. This is a work of... it's a work of fiction, so people are so confused as to how to label this in terms of genre. Like, this just has it genre as religion but it's basically an epistolary novel where these two demons are writing back and forth about how to keep this um, one demon's um, assigned person from going to heaven basically so Wormwood is one of the um, demons and he's the one who's trying to get his assigned person to stray from Jesus and then Screwtape is Wormwood's uncle and he's writing Wormwood letters of advice on how to handle different situations and how to draw his person away from God. And the theology in this is really interesting and I, I loved it. I loved the way some of the concepts of the Christian faith are really broken down in here, particularly when it comes to things like um, spiritual warfare which is like a kind of a taboo topic to really talk about in contemporary Christianity but like read the Bible <laughs> it's in the Bible you know what I mean um, so I liked the way CS Lewis addressed the topic and I feel like it gives me some more knowledge on how to walk in my faith what I didn't like about it was that I thought that the language that he used was a little bit abstract and complex especially when it comes to these ideas that are in themselves kind of abstract and complex so I ended up giving it four stars out of five because I think that it has really fantastic theology but the language makes it inaccessible to people and with this kind of thing, I want a lot of people to be able to read and understand it. And the way that it's written and the language that's used, that's not going to happen. So, four stars out of five for the Screwtape Letters. This 
book I read in August, but I wanted to talk about it because it was a really fantastic book. So this is Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rifka Brunt. This is about a young girl who has an uncle that she absolutely adored who died of AIDS in the 1980s, right around the time we were learning more about AIDS in the US, but still pretty panicked about it, where there are a lot of different prejudices around it. And her uncle is gay, or was gay, and his partner who um, remained in his apartment and stuff like that, ends up contacting, what is her name, June. So the main character is June, and she is, I want to say, 15 years old. So anyway, her uncle's partner contacts her and wants to meet up with her so that they can basically share memories of her uncle. And they meet up in secret because her family has basically um, refused to acknowledge Toby as her uncle's partner. Her uncle's name is Finn. They refuse to basically acknowledge the homosexual relationship and so she has to meet up with Toby in secret and Toby also has AIDS and so this book is beautiful. <laughs> I very rarely ugly cry from reading a book and I ugly cried when I read this book. I just thought it was so well done. She really does such a good job of explaining complex family systems and the pain and grief of losing a loved one and the extensive pain and grief of losing a loved one in the way that they did. Um, so it does deal with some really heavy topics, but I thought it was just beautifully written and I absolutely loved it. So I gave this four stars out of five. Okay, in September I read New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. This is the second book in the Twilight series and I am reading this as part of my series review video series. So I'll hold off on giving a detailed review of this until that video and just say it. this one got three stars out of five. In August, I read this book of poems called Sin by Faro Faro Khazad. And Faro Faro Khazad is a Persian poet. This was published in 2007, but she died much earlier than that. So I'm trying to find the intro. Yes, she died in 1967. Faro Faro Khazad was a rebel in her community. She was thought to be a highly scandalous woman because she wrote about topics that were considered inappropriate for women to write about, like sensuality and independence. She also had some affairs that were considered highly inappropriate and she ended up getting a divorce, which in her very conservative society where she lived, all of that was very taboo. Um, and she died in a car accident in 1967, and there's a little bit of mystery around her death. Um, some people think that she was actually assassinated, and that like the car accident was a setup, but I don't think any historians have been able to actually prove that theory. Her poetry is beautiful. It is sensual, it is very nature-based, and she doesn't necessarily use a lot of form. It's more of a free form. I'm trying to find the poem that I like the best that I will read to you. Okay, so this was my favorite poem from the book. It's called The Wall. <clears throat> In the cold flurry of moments, your silent barbaric eyes erect a wall around me. I flee from you through uncharted roads to see the moon-misted fields, wash my body in distant springs, slip on light steep roads, swell my skirt with lilies in a warm summer morning's colorful haze, and hear the rooster's call from the farmer's roof. I flee from you into the pasture's arms to press my feet hard on his green and drink cold dew from the grass. 
I flee from you to watch from high up on a boulder, lost in dark clouds, the distant seas dizzy dance on an abandoned beach. Like a wild dove at sunset, I will fold under wings the deserts, the mountains, and the sky, listen from among the bushes, dry pleats to the field birds' elated songs. I flee from you so that far from you I can enter my dreams, city, break the weighty gold block to my fantasy's palace. But the mute roar of your eyes blurs all passages to my view, and in its cunning secret dark erects a wall around me. But I will flee, flee from the spell of doubts, seep out like flowers perfume in dreams, set off to the banks of the sun, slither on the night zephyr's wavy rocks. While light's flickering fingers spread like a melody on the jocund sky, I will soft slither into the bed of a gilded cloud, high over a world snug asleep in ceaseless peace. From there, uncaged and free, I will gaze on where your shaman eyes blur all passages to my view, and in their cunning secret dark, erect a wall around that world. So that's just a little taste of what her poetry is like. That is a fairly tame poem. The rest of them tend to get a little bit more spicy, but I really loved her work, and I find her as a person really interesting and fascinating and I think her early death she was 30 something when she died and that's just that's tragic so I give this four stars out of five so Night Film is a book that I read in September and it was amazing um, the basic synopsis of this is that Ashley Cordova is the daughter of a really famous horror film maker and she commits suicide which leads this journalist who has been chronicling um, Cordova, the whole Cordova family, for years. He's been chronicling them for years. He goes to investigate Ashley's suicide, and he meets up with a couple other people who are also, for their own individual reasons, interested in figuring out what really happened with Ashley. And the... <sighs> It's just, it's so juicy and dark, and she comments, Marcia Pestle comments on so many different societal issues and philosophical concepts. It's also a multimedia text, so along with, you know, the actual writing, she has pieces from website like a website called the Blackboards, which is like this special website that only Cordova fans can access. She includes things like magazine clippings, newspaper clippings. Um, she does things like CD covers and all of that. So it is a multimedia book and it kind of takes you through this investigation almost like you are also a journalist looking through all these clippings and trying to find the clues. And it's just very, very well done. And reading this book was like a transformative experience for me. I felt like a different person by the time I got through this book. It is 500 and some pages long. Almost 600 pages, 587 pages long. And I mean, it just, it's, it's phenomenal. And I'll do a separate video specifically really getting into detail on this book. But for now, I give it five stars out of five. All right. This was an August read, Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I didn't enjoy this. This was originally published in 1933, and it's about this young actress. She's like 16. She's vacationing in France, and she meets up with these really wealthy people at a specific hotel, ends up taking a trip to Paris with them, and, you know, the typical F. Scott Fitzgerald shenanigans happen. I just, I really didn't like this book. I thought, organizationally, it was a hot mess, and I thought that the the voice shifted for weird reasons at weird points and I didn't like any of the characters like I felt like the main female character was crazy because she was just like she met this guy 
and within two seconds fell in love with him and then just obsesses over him throughout the whole book in like really irrational stupid ways that I don't even think a 16 year old girl would actually do or think and this um, fella he's married and he's just like lapping up the attention you know and it just to me I felt like it was F Scott inserting himself into a male role in a way that he could have females idolizing him basically um, it just felt like it, it was just F Scott Fitzgerald's narcissism in a character and the whole rest of the book was just a hot mess and I really didn't like it so two stars out of five I read in September The Apprentice by Tess Gerritsen. This is the second book in her Rizzoli and Isles series, which I am also reviewing as part of my series video review series. <laughs> and so I will wait to give you a more detailed analysis of this book in that video. And for now, I did give it three stars out of five. In September, I read Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This is the author of The Girl on the Train. It's her second book. The, this book was published in 2017. And it is about a um, specific river and pool area within a town where a lot of women end up drowning to death. They call it the drowning pool. So this um, woman's sister ends up jumping off the cliff into the drowning pool and dying committing suicide and she goes back to the town to investigate it or to figure out what happened and you know take care of her niece and that kind of thing. This has several 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 different points of view. I had a hard time tracking what the heck was going on in this book because I think I counted anywhere between 10 and 13 points of view that this shifted between and it also shifted between like three to four different timelines and like it just was really hard to track the actual thread of the story among all of that shifting around and what was interesting about that is that there wasn't any one real protagonist. The whole community itself was the protagonist and it did a nice job of the purpose of that which I think was to explain or illustrate how everybody remembers the same situation a little bit differently. Everybody experiences the same situation a little bit differently. And when you can get all of those perspectives, you can somewhat put together a story, but that story is still going to have holes in it and it's still going to have half truths in it, even though you've tried to collect all you possibly can on it. And so I thought that it did, um, you know, it, it made that point well, which I think was the point of having so many different points of view, but it made the actual reading experience work <laughs> and I don't mind working a little bit to read a book to think about things to learn things I don't mind a little bit of work but this was work to the degree that it kept pulling me out of the story and I couldn't get immerse myself in this world I couldn't um, I just couldn't and so I didn't I didn't love it I I wish it had had a more consistent point of view and timeline that wouldn't have required so much cognitive work so that it would have been easier to just absorb myself in the story. Um, even though I understand why that was done, I feel like it was a decision to try to be artistic that ended up harming the overall quality. and. So I, I still am torn on what to write this book and I think I'm just going to stick with a 3 out of 5 because I liked it enough to finish it. I understand why some of the choices were made in terms of the writing um, even if I didn't really like those choices. Okay. In 
August I read Educated by Tara Westover and I wanted to share this one as well because it was really really good. So this is nonfiction. It is a memoir about a girl who grows up on a doomsday preppers farm. I guess it's a farm. And her parents are pretty mentally ill. They are Mormon and they are extremists who think that the government is out to get them, that you know western medicine is a plot of the government to brainwash people like that kind of doomsday prepper and it was a really interesting memoir to read because she talks about how she eventually leaves her family and gets like a world-class education at harvard and cambridge etc and through this education, she's able to kind of deprogram that thinking um, to look at things a bit more rationally and fact-based, but how difficult that process of deprogramming was and um, how painful it was to the whole family to have her separate in this way. And I just, it was a really, really wonderful book. If you liked the memoir Hillbilly Elegy, I think that you will like this book. And I gave it four stars out of five. Okay, we've made it to the last one on the list. In September, I read this nonfiction piece called Seed to Seed. It's about seed saving. And it basically explains how to save seeds from your garden so that you don't have to ever buy seeds, basically. I learned a lot that I didn't know. I had made some assumptions about how to save seeds that ended up being incorrect. And I just learned a lot of good information in here on how to save seeds from my garden, which I am trying to do this fall um, because with the COVID crisis, the seeds, the seed companies, that gardeners typically buy seeds from were out of stock really, really quickly. And so I feel like there's probably gonna be some supply issues again next year. And so I wanna save as many of my own seeds as I can this year to try to prevent running into that issue in 2021. Um, I Like I said, I am a homesteader. I think I mentioned that in my intro and I do container gardening for vegetables and I might have a little plot of land to do some more gardening next year. I'm just gonna have to see how that works out. So um, books like this that teach me how to be a better gardener, how to be a better homesteader are important to me and I do believe I gave this three stars out of five because some of the information in here is outdated. Let me see, when was this published? 2002. So she lists some companies and stuff in here that are no longer in existence. So because some of that is outdated and no longer applicable, I, I did give it three stars, three stars out of five instead of four. All right, that'll do it for what I read in September, along with a few books that I read from August that I really loved. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to read any of them in the comments down below. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, make sure to read good books, drink good coffee, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.